Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel and welcome to another Makeup Worst Reviewed Makeup Artist Adventure Reaction Commentary Extraordinaire Girls. Oh, that reminds me, I should probably check my face before I critique. Oh, stunning, stunning. Do you know, I'm in such a good mental space at the moment. I have not felt this good in a long time. Evil. So my lovelies, it has been a long time since I have done any makeup or makeup dedicated makeup related content here on the Chanel. And if you don't know me, my name is Luxaria. I am a former professional makeup artist and biochemist with a flair for creating skincare and cosmetics. Mm. Making meth? I actually currently formulate all of my own skincare. There is only two things in my skincare routine that is not created by my own very hands, and that is my cleanser and my eye makeup remover, both of which I am currently reverse engineering. She's got a degree. I have 16 years of makeup experience, both on counter, private, freelance, events, and weddings. Everybody loves a wedding, don't they? No. But today, my loves, we are going to be watching someone visit a worst rated makeup artist because that was a trend. That was a trend that happened. People did that for some reason. I, it could never be me. So my lovelies, the last video that we actually delved into any sort of makeup content was actually reacting to the best worst rated makeup artist that Judy D went to. And this was eight months ago. And I, in fact, still have my old face. And I can't believe this. This has become an uncanny tradition here on the Chanel. I was wearing black lipstick then in that video and I'm wearing it again now. There's something so empowering about black lipstick. Ah, oh. so one of the top comments on that video is by Hegadus Zofi. And they say, this artist is great for people who can't afford high-end makeup artists, but would like a look made by someone who knows what they do. And I think it's beautiful and the color match was perfect. So this is actually something very, very, very important to remember when you are going to your makeup artist or you're picking a makeup artist or you're picking any sort of esthetician is that cost does not necessarily equate to experience. You may not get what you want from someone who is charging thousands and thousands versus someone who does their job well, that you like their style of, that perhaps doesn't charge quite as much. Though I must actually say that with a caveat because generally in the world of aesthetics, you get what you pay for. That goes for anything to do with makeup artistry, hairdressing, tattoos, surgery. So my lovelies, today we are going to be watching a YouTuber called Jada Hamilton, who made this video that we're going to watch in 2020. And it is titled, I went to the worst reviewed makeup artist in New York, girls. Now I have never been to New York. I don't have any friends in New York. I don't think I do. Oh, yes I do, I lied. If you're watching Jazar, hello my love. Aside from that, the only real instance of New York City that I know of is literally on Drag Race when everyone is like, I'm from New York, New York City girls, New York City's premier get get gout. I could not believe it. I love doing these videos because it gives me a chance to really flex my makeup muscles because I have a lot of expertise to share and I don't really get an avenue in my life dedicated to sharing that because makeup tutorials here on YouTube do not do well. <gasps> Now I must admit, I have a very specific style of makeup that I enjoy and that I can do very, very, very well, both on myself and other people. And it's the type of makeup that I usually lean towards. So I do my makeup like a showgirl would do their makeup. I need it to be long lasting. I need it to be water and sweat resistant. I need it to not go shiny throughout the day. I need it to be matte. I need it to be blurring. I need it to look flawless on camera, in pictures and in real life. Are you ready, my loves? Let's watch. Today, I'm here with Shelby. We're Shelby girls! about to go to the worst reviewed makeup artist. In I could never. My city. I see a lot of bad, like, Yelp reviews about this lady, and I'll insert it here or something. And oh my god. Oh my god. This is actually. Have we actually ever seen Yelp reviews before? Oh my god. This dumb effing bitch messed up my makeup for prom. It can put completely different than the pictures I showed you. I surely didn't even. And that's the Dar Jeeling. I don't. I don't recommend coming here. I don't understand how she got her license. Those are some scathing reviews. One of the things that you don't really hear a lot of people talk about when you go freelance as a makeup artist is like the kind of mini fear you have about effing something up. Sometimes you do just have a bad day, but it's your customer service and your ability to command your business, your business ethics and your professionalism that should be able to minimize negative reviews, should we say. But you are always gonna get at least one in your career. Electric chair. Not me though, I never got any. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give her the benefit of, of the doubt and see kind of how she is, so. 
and purchase and stuff. Yeah, they saw these reviews. It's probably gonna be pretty good. I love the old YouTube music. We're about to go, so. Okay, so Jada has gorgeous skin tone. She's got a really clear, even base. That would be gorgeous to work on. Like how she makes her money. Lovely stuff, eyebrows. Like a side hustle, so gorgeous eye shape. For that reason, I'm just gonna keep everything private. Her studio type of thing is in her house. Okay. I've never seen that before, so I don't really. You know? Oh, see, we did originally, do you remember, we, I reacted to this lady before who went to someone's house and also had her makeup done and it was potentially fake. In fact, actually it was completely fake. So I'm hoping that this isn't another one that I've fallen for. The prophecy is true. Although even if it is fake, I still feel like my knowledge, being able to share my knowledge about certain areas of makeup and cosmetics, is still valuable, you know? Ring the doorbell. Hello! Hello, are you Jada? Yes! Hi, Amanda! Yeah, I was gonna say, just for privacy reasons, I'd rather not be showing any video. Okay, but, yeah, that makes sense. Um... Let's get started. Okay. So the makeup artist in this video didn't actually want to appear on camera, which is completely fine and understandable. Sometimes you just don't want to be on camera. So we are going to fast forward to the point where Jada is getting her makeup done. Always carry a photo. Yeah. Great idea. You do it almost perfect to the picture. Did you look? The thing with showing a photo of how you want to look is if you're going to book a makeup artist for an event or something, it's always good to give that to them ages in advance. And depending on how important the actual event is. And if it's for your wedding day, you need to have like a consultation day where you can work out all the final things then you have a test run and then maybe even a second one if you really really need it i don't suppose that's the same case with proms i've never done a prom makeup on someone so any makeup artists in the audience here that have jump right in girls do you usually get a situation where you have to do a consultation and then a test run and then the final event did you moisturize today um a little not too much all right i'm gonna have to do it again because it doesn't really look like you've done it so okay. Wait, is this her friend doing this? Okay. Is that her friend? I can just- This is her friend, isn't it? Oh, wow. scandalous. Is it her friend? It might not be. Is it? Oh, have I been had again? The internet's why I go on the internet and lie, girls. <laughs> When prepping the skin for cosmetics, one should always provide a small amount of skincare. That can be an under eye cream, that could be those little under eye masks to make the eyes feel like bright and rejuvenated. Obviously it depends on the kind of service that you want to give. If you're giving like a luxury, amazing service, then the products that you use and the steps you go through should reflect that and reflect that in your cost and your prices and your like return on investment, so to speak. I can rub it in if you want me to. Okay. Okay, what's this? This is a setting Dirty set. brush? Okay. Wait, what was that? Okay, what's this? This is a setting set. Okay. What? Okay, what's this? This is a setting set. Okay. This is a setting cipher? <laughs> I don't know what that was. The package of peace, sweetie. Okay, so she hasn't gone in with any primer. When someone comes into my chair and they have gorgeous skin, I don't necessarily always want to reach for primer. And this kind of also depends on what kind of a look you're going for. If you're going for long wear, I have not found a primer that works so beautifully, cohesively, all in one with a foundation that is my favorite to use. And my favorite to use is, and always will be, Estee Lauder Double Wear Girls. It really is the dog's dangly bits when it comes to long wearing, gorgeous, photo ready makeup. But I will actually say their shade range does leave a little bit to be desired. You can always deepen or lighten with certain different types of powders or concealers. But if you want to get a skin tone inclusive kit, what you can do is support black owned beauty brands like Beauty Bakery, Fenty, Iman Cosmetics, Danessa Myricks, and of course, Pat McGrath Labs, if you want to go for that luxury. We go, oh, brush just fully on the skin. Oh, this will give you like a natural tan, so. Okay. Yeah, I don't know anything about makeup, so... Um... Do you want it darker or lighter? Um... To be honest, just do, like, whatever you think is best on me. I just, I don't know if this is an actual makeup artist that we, that she's gone to here. I don't know if this is like, I'm, I've been stung before girls. But when it comes to skin tone matching, it's always very, very helpful to test your products before you put them on the skin. I mean, that sounds obvious, but if you're just starting out in the industry, you might not know how to do this. A favorite hygienic way of mine is to put several little dots on a napkin and swipe across the cheek and the neck to see which of the shades is going to match the best. And if you work with a foundation that particularly likes to oxidize or dry down, 
down or shift under different types of lighting. Make sure you buff it in gently and wait a minute. Wait a minute to see what the color is that's gonna be the perfect match. My prom starts at um, six o'clock, so. Oh, this is a prom make. Actually, have you done definitely my sister. Okay. Like I said, there was a few bad reviews, but I'm actually really good at what I do, so. Okay. You would never say that. What does it mean? Like a little, like a lighter look? Yeah, um, I think tan looks good, but I want to make you a little lighter. Mm, okay. Okay, this isn't real. This this is not real, sis. This is not a real video. Simply cannot be real because look at the state of that brush. That brush has been used goodness knows how many times on goodness knows what. Ew, Michelle. I think I could make an entire video about the fakery of worst reviewed makeup artist girls. Again, if you found you've put the incorrect tone on somebody's skin when it comes to foundation or concealer, you can remove it. It's not the end of the world to say this product that I have placed on your skin is not behaving exactly how I wanted it to, so we're going to rechange it. Obviously, do this more towards the beginning, the absolute beginning of the service, because if you've gone past the point of no return and you're near the end of your service, and then you think, oh, maybe I could have done that a bit different. You've just made it very difficult for yourself. But then again, that is exactly why we have consultations and makeup test days. No, 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 no. No. Application of foundation is probably the most crucial point of making a look go from that consumer level cosmetics into, you know, high glam, gorgeous, I couldn't have done this myself. And if that means popping an extra couple of sponges in your kit, you should also include that in your price. But I have worked in counter situations where time is very much of the essence. So I used to work for a brand in which we would have timed makeup styles or makeup looks, depending on how much the client was spending with us. Because of the time pressure, sometimes that lent very much into the case of get it as fast on the skin as possible and then sort out texture afterwards. When it comes to foundation, I always truly believe that the minimal amount you need to put on for the maximum outcome is the perfect place to go, especially when you're doing long wear makeup because it has a tendency to look very heavy. If you're gonna apply foundation with a brush, make sure it's really buffed into the skin or failing that, just quickly go over with a damp sponge afterwards. But it will sort out any blending issues that you may have with the foundation. I'm a professional woman. No. Now I'm gonna do your eyeshadow. Uh, um, you're looking so, for a light blue look? Yeah. I mean, it goes without saying, but definitely don't just put foundation on your client's forehead and nowhere else. Teal oh, wow. eyeshadow. What palette is that? Um, I actually bought the James Charles palette. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a wide variety of colors. I happen to like the Teal eyeshadow. Do you have one? Um, I don't. I don't have any makeup. Like, I don't know anything about makeup. Mm. Wow. It's this one. Mm. Okay. Mm. So this was uploaded in 2020 and I feel like that was kind of around just kind of the end of the hype of like real big beauty guru palettes. For me, it's not a red flag for someone who is a working makeup artist to have a beauty guru palette in their kit. But there is definitely leagues to makeup depending on what you are selling as a service. If you're selling that Instagram glam for an affordable price that you could do in a fast amount of time, perhaps your clients in that scenario are going to recognize a palette and associate it with a certain person or a certain type of artistry or a certain type of look. Using anything by Makeup by Mario, for example, will elicit your client to think of Kim Kardashian and that kind of high, snatural glam. I am Gigi Della Roca, businesswoman. Half of the point of building a successful business is also understanding how your brand personally looks to other people. Oh, no, that's not real. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. This is gonna get blended, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. No eye primer. No concealer on the eyelids if you're that way inclined. Never, never, don't, this, oh! This kind of style of makeup, I know it as garage doors, which is where you have one shade of color straight down the eyelids, that's kind of it. A key point that I always see when people are doing smoky eyes, when it's from a consumer point of view, and maybe they don't have the experience or the expertise to understand how to exactly perform a brilliant smoky eye, is that you don't start with your eyeshadow in the placement of where you want it blended. It needs to be able to to move into that place to create that transition or to create that beautiful gradient. If you put down a massive amount of eyeshadow in one spot and then you go to blend it, you'll end up with giant panda eyes and that might be the vibe, but more often than not, it's not the vibe. It's not the vibe, stop! Don't usually go in with mm, a blending kind of brush a first bit out either. Here because I'm doing your wings, mm. so I want it to blend right. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. 
wings. Now I'm going to apply this light blue. It's kind of sparkly, so it'll give you that shimmer. Um, I don't know what your theme of prom is, but... Yeah, it's, um, like, under the stars. But she would have had... It's really good, actually. Wait, but she showed you the photo, so... I mean, it's not real, is it? Let's be honest, it's not real! That is quite a nice colour, a shimmery blue. I just don't wear colourful eyeshadow. I find it very difficult to fit in with my... My new face! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna apply a dark blue to the corner. Right. And with the same brush. It, right? All of this with the no. same brush, so okay. not a makeup artist. Are you gonna do lashes as well? Yes. Some lashes would be good. I've never even worn lashes before, it's crazy. Yeah, I like how the dark blue blends in. It looks really nice on you. Yeah, it does. I mean... Yeah, I'm just gonna wipe it after. <gasps> This is this has to be like fitting for an 80s cosplay party, not fitting for a makeup artist studio. Is that tea? You often see weird and unintentional but intentional looking makeup in like high fashion campaigns, so you know, it has no rules, but it definitely has guidelines, and those guidelines shouldn't really be broken, no. I say it what I say it. Oh, uh, I like if you could send people to me too. Yeah, of course, of course. I just don't believe that's a real conversation with the same shadow brush. So I know at the moment that Morphe is getting like a bad rap for everything. Although apparently they're going bankrupt, which is kind of a shame because they have a couple of staple products of mine that I really like. Some of their blending brushes are gorgeous and super affordable, super, super affordable. Sometimes when you have luxury priced brushes as a makeup artist who does a lot of freelance work, the more that you end up cleaning and reusing your brushes and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and reusing and cleaning and reusing can really affect the way that they are how can i say this they're not new anymore those brushes don't look new anymore so sometimes it actually behooves me in my opinion this is just my opinion some other makeup artists out there may disagree with this but i personally like the idea of not feeling so absolutely hatefully sad when I have to throw out a brush, especially when it comes to something like a blending brush, which is constantly doing this motion. Flat packer brushes, a bit of a different story, but constantly doing this motion will absolutely have a degradation effect on the bristles of that brush. Unfortunately, you can't escape that. That is how erosion happens. I've oh, cracked the code, oh, girl. girl! she's got a degree. Science! Um, would you be able to close your eyes for me? Because okay. I really can't blend it well with okay. your eyes. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Oh, more blue, more blue. Blower Algon! Hmm. Right. Grooming of the what brows. What is this? Oh, this is Anastasia. Hmm. Okay. Anastasia? <gasps> that That's brush blended, is right? filth. I've said it once and I've said it before in all of these videos. I know that this one may not be genuine, but I am very much of the opinion. Then you'll know this if you watch any of my other makeup based videos. Sanitization is key. Even if you are a fresh starting out makeup artist or you are a makeup artist with 48,000 years experience in the industry. I, I was, was the world's first. first. Makeup artists, sanitization and sanitary practices are paramount to providing a good service and also keeping those reviews high. Oh yeah, look at those gorgeous feathery hair strokes. Where'd you go to beauty school? Um, I can't really say on camera. What? She can't, what, what is this? Uh, excuse me. She's oh, obviously not been to beauty school. What'd you think of it? <laughs> oh, it's not her friend. Oh. oh. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. I bet it's like one of her other friends though. Like surely it has to be. Oh, I don't know. That's thrown a spanner in the works, girl. Team Rocket's blasting off again. This does not look like this. Yeah, <gasps> oh, is that the eyeshadow that we are going for? I'm going to tell you my loves. I actually did a tutorial on this exact eyeshadow 12 years ago. You can't see it now because it's actually privated videos on my old Chanel because I got shadow banned for YouTube for making trans content back in 2015. But I did this, I have done this, and I know the products that work, and I know the technique that needs to be used. This look is actually quite a complex look, and it certainly could not be achieved in about half an hour or 45 minutes. You would definitely need a decent time slot to create something like that. It's been 
84 years. She's back! Janine's oh back! Yeah. I've never worn lashes, so... Um, actually, I hate to say it, but this is my first time applying lashes. Nobody's ever wanted them. Oh, that's not real. Do you know, the amount of time... Do you know, the amount of times that I see people using tools to apply eyelashes is wild to me. I know that for some people, they actually really help. I think there's actually certain beauty schools that actually teach this, but you are gonna have so much more precision if you get used to the idea of applying eyelashes onto your client with their eyes tilted back like this, not closed, because as soon as you're closed, you'll glue them into the wrong place, tilted back and gently placed into position. And then in order to blend mascara with the eyelashes, I would take my favorite mascara, whatever that is at the moment. In fact, actually throughout most of my career, it's been Benefit Roller Lash. I really like it. It's a really good long wearing mascara that doesn't seem to irritate most people's eyes. I would put a little bit of that mascara onto a makeup palette, not like an eyeshadow palette, but like a, an actual painter's palette. Use a fan brush and then just gently prise the mascara onto the eyelashes, sealing the gap between the faux lashes and the natural lashes. Super easy, straightforward, immediately done, girls. Not this, not that, no. The white gives it like a little touch, you know? Yeah, no, that's, that's no touches. Kind of the They're not hideous yeah, lashes, though. Yeah, no, I, I don't have any, like, makeup or anything. That's great. <gasps> oh, no! Oh. Latex in the eyeball, girl! Well, like, oh, look, it's printed. It okay. I... Sure. Oh, no! Do you know what? I am going to say one thing. If you find you have a client in which they're, they want a very specific type of false eyelash applied and it's a really skinny, natural, skinny legend, demi wispy, soft brown lash with a clear band. One of those ones that's so delicate. If you're finding that the glue that you are using, my favorite one is actually called EDMA, EMDMA, MDMA. <laughs> It's ketamine and MDMA. This is my favorite lash glue here. You're never gonna be able to see what it says there because it's a metallic tube. It is Super Strong Hold by Emada. My favorite, absolute favorite one, which was the Revlon Forever Lash, I think it was called. They stopped producing it and I was like, oh, hmm. This one, honestly, empty a little tiny bit onto a makeup palette and gently press the lash through it and then wait for it to go tacky. Do not blow on the eyelashes. You can do them with a little wave like this with a tweezer if you want, but then place gently into the area. And if you've got really, if you've got a really, really stubborn lash on someone that's just not going on, glue underneath, put it on, glue over the top and set it with eyeshadow. Immediately sealed, that is not coming anywhere. She can sob and go swimming and skydiving and that is not going anywhere, girls. A witch. That looks lovely, glamorous. Oh, interesting. An interesting, oh, a beautiful wing for a beautiful oh, woman. <laughs> yeah, it, she's there. Um, this do you think is fake. Could, like clean it up a little bit? I don't want like too dramatic. Um, do you not trust me? I just, just don't feel comfortable with the being No, like, that's surely dramatic. hostility. Like, obviously um, she knows yes. that she's being filmed. Let me do this side real quick. Okay. But you know, actually this eyeliner is not unsalvageable. When you're in a counter environment and you're a makeup artist, you're primarily there to sell. And the idea of selling is to get, you know, someone in, someone in your chair, you teach them what they need to know, you show the products that you've used and you get them out. And that should be a well-rounded professional quick service. And in order to get eyeliner done beautifully, fast, before anything else, gone, gorgeous, gout, it would behoove you. Oh my God. Stop saying behoove. It would behoove you to practice with a product that you like to use to tidy up. Some people, if they're doing their eyeliner before doing any other makeup on their eyes, unrelatable, I like a showgirl look, will tidy up with a makeup wipe or with some tissue and some cleanser or something like that, maybe even a bit of toner. For me, my favorite is to get a flat top brush and to use a little tiny bit of concealer, do a little swipe underneath the eye and a little bit of a blend with a blending brush. And then you've sold three products, the eyeliner, the concealer and the blending brush. Done. Oh, so direct sorry. needle no, in the eyeball, girl. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, this can't be real. Not lid. <gasps> Not liquid liner under the eyeball, girls. Are you still gonna clean this one up? Oh, this is looking very no. Central St. Martins. You got a little up here <gasps> as well. Um, yeah, I'll clean that up. Okay. Look up. 
Nice. Oh, what, what is the design? Oh, that's nice. That. nice. I'll tell you what, on my face, when I have made an absolute monumental F up that I absolutely cannot come back from, I have one of two options. I can turn it into a design or I can pop a rhinestone over it. <laughs> I'm not necessarily saying that you should do that on your client, but it's definitely something to explore. You like the hearts? Yeah, that's what I'm hearts? Water on the brain. Glitter! I hate glitter. Highlighter? Stank fingers. Oh, that's not where you would put highlighter, but kind of sure. Your nose? Mm -hmm. You know, I actually, I actually, in my life, my makeup artist career, I've had to do numerous different types of nose contouring, and I just don't like shimmery highlight on the nose. I just don't like it. A matte highlight works perfectly well because after an hour, the nose will naturally start to get a little tiny bit oily anyway and create that kind of snatched light reflecting effect. Diamonds! Putting shimmer directly on the nose, really? I just, I don't think, no. It's not for me, but if a client asks for it, I can only really push a certain amount and say, well, I think that this would be better, but if they really want it, they can have it. No blush, no, just highlighter. That's also nowhere near highlighter placement. Oh, that's not easy. I'm gonna do your lips. Lips, go! What color? Black. Um, I have like a tan color, so... Tan? Okay. Oh, didn't sharpen, didn't... Always sharpen your lip pencils and always make sure they're sanitary. Dip them in sanitary solution, whether that's makeup sanitizer or isopropyl alcohol for a few seconds, then sharpen, dip again, wipe with a fresh tissue, and that's it, sanitized. I'm the baby! I'm the drunk baby! Um, um, I have a question. Yeah. Overall, how much is this gonna be? Um, because I use James Charles, which is a very, like, Rare palette. Um, I had the limited edition one. It's eighty dollars, and with the lashes because they're made with ink sheepskin. So um, we're looking at one eighty altogether. One eighty? I don't think that's. This cannot be real. This cannot be realistic. This cannot be realistic. One hundred eighty dollars for this? No. She's dead. Prices. How do you charge to be a professional makeup artist? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> actually something I'm not going to give away here on the Chanel. <laughs> but if you are looking for a great way at trying to understand how much you should be charging, actually look at the fees of people that charge in your local area and that will give you a kind of base starting idea at the level of expertise on how long they've been in the industry and also what is kind of like the going rate that's competitive in your area. Once you have an established clientele, that's when you can start to readjust your prices in line with inflation or in line with where you want your career to be. I don't understand you're charging me 190 for this. Well, it's not 180. It's not worth 190. This is not worth 190 dollars. Right, I was not told about this price. Yeah, that's that's not, not let me talk to my manager. Yeah, can you please go talk to him because I have my and she just closed the door. Can I go talk to my manager? But your man but you're like working from home? This isn't this isn't in a studio. Hmm, no, this video girl fake! Fakery is afoot! So sorry for the misunderstanding. Um I really hope you'll come back again. You know, $90, $190, I, no. So now Jada has finished having her makeup done. After the makeup artist has finished the look, um, I'm still of the opinion that this is not a genuine video. However, let's actually look at what the final outcome is. So Jada here has multiple different tones of blue as an eyeshadow. She also has a, a wing liner, lashes, glitter, a design of hearts, incorrect shade of foundation, and also red lipstick. Now, just as a professional opinion in terms of makeup and color theory, unless someone is really, really pushing you to have blue eyeshadow and red lipstick, 
which I don't think most makeup consumers ever want. Just don't, just don't do this color combination. Just don't do this color combination because it obviously, it's very clown colors. Let's be honest. Now I am personally a fan of a deranged clown, but I don't think most people for their prom or for their wedding or for their special event want to embody a deranged clown. Well, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Something in the universe is telling me, girls. Now this video was posted in 2020. That is three years ago as of this day. Oh, three years ago, what? It has 10 million views and the link will be in the description box of this video if you want to go and watch the whole thing. But I've got some thoughts. So my lovelies, I've got a couple of thoughts about this makeup look and the way that the makeup artists conducted themselves. Obviously, I think it goes without saying, if you are in a freelance position, in fact, if you're in any employed position or self-employed position when it comes to a single service that you are providing, professionalism is the word of the day, girls. Professionalism will get you very, very far in this industry. Sanitization is next and talent. Talent is really good, but also keeping very up to date with trends, with products and honing your skills onto several beautiful different looks will really get you a long way in this industry. I do genuinely feel like this video is in fact fake, although I am looking through the comments and there isn't, there isn't like any mention of the video being like in question of genuineness, which kind of does make me go like, mm, maybe she's blocked the word fake. If this is a legitimate video, that is one of the worst shocking makeup jobs I have ever seen. So my lovelies, let me know what you think about what we've seen in today's video. It has been quite a journey from start to finish. Even though I feel like this video was fake, I hope you can still take away some level of information about the cosmetics industry and how to process your cosmetics client. And with that, my lovelies, it is time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here, my loves. Yes, you can. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Bloodmeal7. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you stunning woman on the go. And if you want to be in with the chance of being featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me over on Twitch. It is Luxaria Plays and I stream every Monday and Thursday, my loves, and I am having a big announcement soon over there, so make sure you come and follow. And once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Aloria, Dr. Dreamorella, Laura Ali, Luke Peterson, Orko Samoji, Andy Henry, Autumn Holly, Beebles32, Caitlin Coating, Camille Sara, Casey Donahue, Shell Herman, Christina Crownover, Christina Kyle, Connor, ContraPoints, Crafty Leaks, Danielle, Danny Smith, Deborah Gwynn, Donuts for Life, Dr. A, Jevold, Elizabeth Stone, Eric Castillo, Jarrod Pavlovsky, Jen Martin, Jennifer Herman, Jenny Hendricks, Caitlin Wright, Catherine Ritter, Lane Wade, Laura Jane, Les Banana, Lisa Pennington, Mary Siren, Mazel Morel, Megan Holly, Min Min DM, Moisten98, Mariah Sherman, Moldy Apple, Nadia Hamdi, Nixie Tricks, Paolo Rivera, Pink Caramel, Princess Lillian, Rachel VC, Biscuit Romano, Ryan Vita, Sexy Texy RN, Slampire Queen, Sushwa, Steph Utek, Succubus Lena, Summer Neff, Travafol, Tromo, Victoria Carella, Zaya Naza, and Zoe Zevier. And you know what, my loves? I'm gonna leave her on the notes of you want to come online and make fake videos, you do use this. <laughs> it was quite entertaining, I guess. 